let us take a journey back into time, back thousands of millions of years to when the Earth was young. And this is how it might have looked. For it was once only a fiery ball of rock, without continents, oceans, or air, or living things of any kind. Welcome back to That's Odd TV. I'm Lynn with my co-host Nadia. Today our subject is dinosaurs. I know. They are fascinating. Ever since I was a little child, I was interested in dinosaurs. There weren't enough old movies on TV right. to satisfy me. And books in the library. That was yeah. a you know, common book in a child's library. And, yeah. But what's really interesting, I think, is just when we think we know kind of everything about dinosaurs, they've mm -hmm. spent how many years you know, excavating, we find new things all the time um, and new theories. There's a new theory, you know, for a long time, the theory was that a meteorite hit the Earth, and that's what caused the you know, extinction of dinosaurs. That's the one I think of most right. often. Right, and that still holds some sway, but they're talking now, or new research has shown that the dinosaurs may have survived for 700,000 years after that meteor. There's a meteorite or meteor that hit in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, which is the theory, um, but dinosaurs continue to live. But possibly not the largest ones. And one of the theories about that is that other mammals were eating the eggs of the largest dinosaurs mm -hmm. and that caused their extinction. So it might be a combination of a couple of oh, theories. It's interesting so. to hear the new theory. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It makes so. a lot of sense. So a lot of interesting things about dinosaurs. What do you know? Well, uh, I, I was going to talk about a couple of things that happen across the country about dinosaurs, kind of kitschy and cheesy. Mm -hmm that if our viewers happen to be driving on Route 66 or wherever they might be, that they might be able to find some interesting Perfect. dinosaur tourist traps. Right. Perfect. And one of the first one, let's say you're going down through Spring Hill, Florida. Okay. There are two things, and I haven't determined if they're uh, the same person runs them or not. One is, and we'll get a picture up on the screen, is a service station that's built like a giant dinosaur. Oh, cool. And even the drive-in bays are part of between the legs of the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. It looks like it might have about eight legs if you look real well, close. Yeah. I'm not so sure how that works. Oh, who knows? And then Harold's Auto Center, which is also in Spring Hill, Florida, that's a gas station. So I'm thinking those two things are somehow it connected sound like with it, right. each other. So cool. that's a fun one. That's a great idea. That's cool. I like the use of that. Um, I have a couple of interesting things I learned about dinosaurs. Um, we know, for instance, that the word velociraptor means speedy thief. Right? I know I've read that someplace. And the word dinosaur means terrible lizard. Mm. But my thinking is in modern times, dinosaur actually means like a crotchety old geezer who still thinks that men are naturally better at science and business. So that's a, that's a dinosaur in my, in my mind. And then we are still making new discoveries. Um, 
as, as recently as 2015 in Alberta, Canada, they discovered a new a species of dinosaur. They're calling it Hellboy. That's the uh, nickname what they came up with it. Because the horns on the, on the skeletal remains kind of reminded them of the comic book character Hellboy, kind of a demonic character. I know that one. There's a movie, too. Right, right. Yeah. And they also said they had a hellish time excavating it from the rock. <laughs> so kind of two things combined. But this is a beast. That's a beast of one, and we'll have a photo of that. We so, will. Yeah. Well, and also you can go to the Grand Canyon, okay. which most people are looking at the high-end tourist sites there, but there's a place in its Peach Springs, Arizona, a tiny little town there around the Grand Canyon that has like four, this the way they describe it in this uh, on this website is crumbling dinosaurs. Oh. So you've got to be desperate. Maybe you had to stop for gas along <laughs> okay. the way. Don't drive all the way out okay. of your way to go to this place to see these. It's not a destination These four but... seen better days dinosaurs. But it's Peach Springs, Arizona, and it's near the Grand Canyon Cat. And they're saying they're real bones, not like the when they remake bones. No, these are these are cheesy made up dinosaurs oh, okay. with the paint peeling and <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Gotcha. That's what I mean. Don't make a That's special trip. Yeah. <laughs> Probably put together in the forties. Yeah. 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 Something right. like that. Um, I have a couple other fun facts. Um, I, th I think dinosaurs are so fascinating because their size is a big issue. Um, you know, that makes them so extraordinary. And a couple of things about the size of them. Um, I read that some of the biggest plant eaters had to eat as much as a, a ton of food a day. And they said, think about it in terms of like a whole, a bus sized pile mm -hmm. of vegetation every single day. That's what they had to eat. So I would think that if anything, they might have caused their own extinction just by eating up what, they, what was around them. That would not be uh, uh, unbelievable. Right. That would make a lot of sense because even the elephants today who eat a lot right. uh, can clear a large and then have to move. They have to migrate. Have to move. And they're always migrating. Yeah. yeah, that could be what happens. So them. especially the dinosaurs in desert areas might have had. Yeah, trouble. it yeah. might not have been a desert when they started. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Created a desert. So. Exactly. So well, okay, Holbrook, Arizona. There's okay. a place called Stewart's Petrified Wood. Okay, and it is. It was uh, started by a, a, a man who's 81 years old when they posted this thing on the internet, and he's now retired, but he collected all kinds of dinosaur-related things. Okay. I get the idea that this is still, maybe a, had maybe seen a little bit of better days, but they still say that it's still a gem, and if you're going to be down along I-40, exit 303, northeast side, you can turn off and pull in there and okay. see his uh, dinosaur memorabilia. Okay, and, so, and petrified wood though being his starting point? Lots of petrified wood. Yeah. I've been at another spot and I'll talk about that later that's not that far from there. But yeah, lots of petrified wood pieces all around and in and outside. Because there's a, a national, Petrified Forest National yep. Park is near there. Okay. Which would be the, the more better known uh, tr attraction right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and interestingly, I just heard from somebody who had a piece of petrified wood in their backyard, just as a um, garden piece, whatever. And when they were selling the house, the estate salespeople came out and priced that, valued that at like several hundred dollars. They were just going to leave it behind. Oh, I've it. got some. They, and I, yeah. I was going to bring it there's, today. There's some value to that. I think hers was a big chunk. I'm not really sure, but so. Um, Okay, I uh, read something that dinosaur skulls have large holes in their skulls, like big windows, and they think the reason for it is to make the skulls lighter, because those enormous heads they had, um, the skulls would have weighed, you know, a ton, perhaps, if they'd been solid, solid um, bone. So the, the, you know, it's like nature created a, a way for them to have a little bit lighter skull. The same way... Birds have hollow bones yeah. for a specific reason. That would be that flight. Would serve the yeah. same purpose. Yeah, true. yeah. Oh. And and speaking of the small, um, well, the the head size. So the Stegosaurus has the smallest brain for its body size of any known dinosaur. So it's it says that the body of a Stegosaurus was the size of a van, but the brain was the size of a walnut, <laughs> which I think is hysterical because we used to always say that about our dog. You know, yeah. she's so dumb, her brain must be the size of a walnut. Well, now we find out that the Stegosaurus indeed had that small of a brain. How could it even 
get about with a, yeah. a brain that yeah. size. How can they even make plans? Yeah, make plans. That's make right. Make plans <laughs> <laughs> to capture something. Dinosaur plans. Make plans for lunch. Right. Okay. Well, Tuba City Dinosaur Track Site. Oh, Dinosaur Tracks. That's what it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's in Moen Avi, Arizona, off U.S. Highway 160. Okay. And I read a little bit about that. That's a very isolated spot. The people who went there made a comment that they were met by a Native American who asked them if they wanted to see the track. He personally guided them in okay. to the place, uh, mm -hmm. free will donation, okay. and shows you where the dinosaur tracks are. They're oh. not right at, readily available right by the road, so you have to be guided in. Okay. What a fun thing that to do. That would be cool, to, cool if to find. No one's there, though, when you get there. I guess you just have to drive right on by. <laughs> or maybe, they're, maybe they have signs. Of, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they do. Yeah. Maybe but, they do. You know, just imagine in the in the days when these were first discovered by indig indigenous people or anywhere yeah. in the world. Yeah. In fact, that was think? exactly. And that, I read that in um, 3,500 years ago in China, they found some dinosaur teeth. They didn't know what they were. They had no idea, and so they assumed they were dragon teeth. So that makes a, sense. I think a lot of folklore yeah. starts because of the misunderstanding of what sure. what they found, and probably the same thing with tracks. Yeah. You know, well, they, they believed in dinosaurs, and then they find these teeth and yep. these bones. Yeah. Yep. So or they believed in dragons. So. I'd believe it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the largest dinosaur eggs are as big as basketballs. Yeah. But the interesting thing is, they said that the bigger the sh the bigger the egg, the thicker the shell. And mm -hmm. so the theory is that they really couldn't have gotten any bigger than that because the, the infant dinosaur inside would not have been able to break its way out sure. had it been any thicker of a shell. Sure. So that was probably the biggest size possible. Yeah. When you see them in places like in the Science Museum, the biggest um, eggs uh, it were you know maybe this big, like yeah. small football kind of thing. Yeah. But, but in real life, I guess they got as big as a basketball, wow. which yeah, is pretty amazing. The biggest ones. That is kind of amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have another site for you. Okay. Cabazon Dinosaurs. That's in Cabazon, California. Okay. And it says, from the, inter from the interstate highway, the uncommon view of two giant dinosaurs on an arid plain surrounded by mountains is an irresistible magnet. So it's drawing people Okay, so you can in see it right on, from the roadside. Yeah, off the interstate. But tourists are not all, the only ones compelled to stop. It says, well within LA's convenient day drive sphere, these dinos became media darlings in the 1950s and uh, the 1980s especially. Okay. Appearing in Coke commercials, oh. MTV videos, okay. and Pee Wee's giant, ad Pee -wee, wait, Pee Wee's Big Adventure oh, okay. movies. So okay, sure. That'd be a fun place to stop and see. Yeah, and take, actually. I'd like to take photos a from the selfie with things. me and a yeah, dinosaur you and there the dinosaur. in California. Well, and this is interesting because these are all in the southern part of the United States, it sounds like, yeah. for the most part. Um, and I did read that dinosaurs have been found in every continent mm -hmm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. So now it makes me wonder if other continents, if people in other continents do the same kind of things with tourist related oh, they things. Must. Yeah, because it's got to be a, a kind of an interesting yeah. thrill for, for everybody. They so. must. Uh, one last um, piece of did you know that I came up with is that they said dinosaurs often swallowed large rocks. And the reason was yeah. the rocks would help them kind of... Um, chew or grind up the food yeah. in their stomach. But they did find one dinosaur skeleton that w had a rock in its throat, so they're pretty sure that it choked, choked to death. Choked on it. All right. Trying to Maybe went it. just a little bit too big with that rock, so. Well, turkeys and chickens do the same yeah. thing. And of course, they're descendants of the dinosaurs. So they say, yeah. So hey, there you go. Yep. I, and I'll bet you now and then one of those might ch choke on oh, a rock. Oh, I suppose, yeah. The yeah. size of that brain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're talking even pea size, oh, so. Okay. One of the fun things in town here um, in St. Paul, we have a science museum. It's absolutely a fabulous uh, museum. And um, I went there looking for dinosaurs. I so. didn't get there that day. That's I had right. What issues. happened to you, Nadia? <laughs> she <laughs> ended up in Poughkeepsie. Yeah. Took wrong a wrong turn. turn. Harriet Island for people who live around there here. There you go. And so. then I had to go round and round and round. But so. it was fascinating. The whole, the whole museum, of course, is fascinating. But I spent that time in the dinosaur part. And you can see, you know, the reproductions of a stegosaurus, you know, full size, whatever, velociraptors. There are a couple of like hands-on things for kids and I wanted to be adults. there. Yeah. Well, it'll be there, you know, it'll still be there. So <laughs> maybe uh, I'll take a, a cab. Yeah, take a cab. <laughs> um, 
It's not that it's hard to find, but no. St. Paul has kind of a weird, um, weird set of roads and intersections. And I'm and directionally challenged. There you go. So, but I highly recommend it. It was a, it was a great time. And what we have following uh, is um, some clips of photos yeah. Yeah, taken that day. We... Oh yes, and we've got a, we've got the science museum clip coming right. That's up. right. So stay tuned. And watching that clip makes me even more disappointed that I didn't get to go to the Science Museum that day. So I'm putting that on my to-do list. What did you think about the clip? It was fun. It was fun. It was a good reminder of what happened that day. And it was pretty full. It was a, it was a weekday, yeah. but there were school kids everywhere, all classes, and they were all taking notes yeah. and filling out little worksheets. And I'm glad good. you took those pictures because that just made it that much more interesting to put it together yep. into a... A nice slideshow, and I had fun doing that part. Good. <laughs> Super. Well, we've got something coming up. I Caramel in a can. It's definitely odd, but through the holidays, I think your kids will absolutely love this. And what I want to explain to uh, Lynn and the audience while we're talking about it is, this is the can that you're going to see me cooking in the clip in just a minute. And it's sweetened condensed milk. As you can see, this can has not been opened, but it is already been transformed into caramel in this can and cooked cool. the way I did it in the video. And that is in a slow cooker on high for four and a half hours. Okay. So when we come back from the clip, Lynn and I are going to open this and mm -hmm. taste the caramel in the can. Super. It's like a holiday. So stay tuned, watch the clip, and, and uh, have your kids do it when you get back home. Hello. I'm doing something fun for the kids today. It's a little bit of a science experiment in the fact that there's some chemical changes that go on in this recipe that they'll be able to visually see as the project goes along. It's called Dulce, Dulce de Lec, and it, that's a French word. Let's use American as we go through the rest of this recipe and we'll just call it caramel in a can. What I have is sweetened condensed milk. What you might want to do is have two cans on hand when you do this so that you can open one, show the kids how creamy and white it is inside. 
I only have one can today, so I'm not doing that. But that way they can see what it looks like at the beginning and at the end of the experiment. Now, all you need to do, and this is why it's so great for kids, is to uh, peel off the label and get rid of the paper label and place it in a slow cooker. I have an apple here that's sliced, which we'll eat with it later, but we don't, we really don't need that till the end. I've got some boiling water that we'll put in here, and this is just to get the slow cooker started. You could start with cold water, it would just take a lot longer. This fills eight to 10 cups, will fill your slow cooker and fill over the lid of the can. Simply put the lid on, turn it to high, and my cord won't reach, so I'll plug it in in just a moment. But you'll put this to cook for three and a half to four and a half hours. I'll be back when it's finished. It's been four hours. Let's see what we have here. Nice and hot and steamy. We'll pull this can out. I hope it doesn't slip. And set it on the counter. And now it needs to cool for at least a half an hour before you attempt to open it because there's a little pressure inside that can. Not a lot, but a little. So let's let it sit and come back and uh, taste the treat. It's perfect. Wasn't that fun? That was cool. I know. That was cool. And I love simple things. I mean, you, you don't have to mix 27 ingredients and you come up with something. So. Nope, just one ingredient. And Lynn and I are going to taste what Ooh. we did there in the clip and get an idea of how odd and fun this is. So it was one single ingredient, mm -hmm. can of the um, sweetened, sweetened condensed, milk, condensed milk, and then a slow cooker. Yeah. I wonder, could you do it in the oven? Yes. Okay. Is yeah. It? It's a Spanish thing, and, and I've, I've seen on the internet that you can actually put the can in the oven, too, if it's on like 200. Real low. Right, yeah. okay. Super low. You don't anything that just scared me a little bit. Yeah. Well, and if you have a slow cooker, that's, that's what they're made for. Yeah, so. because you're, you're doing it without opening the can, so a certain amount of pressure builds up in the can. Yeah. But not enough to cause a problem. Look oh, at that. Oh, it's caramel colored. It's caramel colored. So it began as the pure white yeah. that you see, and it turned to caramel colored yeah. just by that cooking. And it looks, it looks like caramel. Yeah. It looks exactly like what you sell yeah. it to be. You take a little bit. Alrighty. Grab a slice of apple. Make a big mess here. Take a taste. This is how we get paid to do jobs like this, by having food. And I'll take my bite in just a moment. Thank you everyone for watching the show. We'll see you next time on That's Odd. And don't mm. go away too quickly because there's a whole lot of interesting things happening today in our credits, so you won't want to miss the uh, Easter eggs, as you might want to call them. Stay, stay watching. Stay tuned for more cool stuff. That's it. That's what I was trying or to say. Or odd stuff. And this <laughs> is delicious. Oh, good. This is fantastic. All so, right. Thanks. See you, See you all later. next time. I got to taste this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Isn't it good? It's great.
And now the curtain was rising on a new age of life, the Mesozoic, throughout whose entire span of 130 million years, the reptiles were to sweep the earth. Some grew into huge swamp lizards, like the dinosaur Diplodocus, who was the longest animal ever to walk the earth. Though for all his wonderful frame, he was almost brainless. Others sprouted featherless wings and took to the air. Such was the lizard Pteranodon, whose wing spread of 27 feet was the largest in history. Many of the reptiles returned to the sea, among them the lizard Mosasaur, who is believed to have been the most ferocious sea creature that ever lived. And as always, the waters teemed with shellfish. But it was the Belemnites who were now the most numerous. And here we see them attacked by a large fish-like reptile called the Ichthyosaur, who was himself the prey of the really enormous Pliosaurus. But chiefly, it was the age of the dinosaurs, of the great land lizards who specialized in armor, and those who depended on speed and ferocity. Their varieties seemed endless, and yet, when the land began once more to rise, ending the Mesozoic, the dinosaurs and nearly all the other large reptiles vanished from the Earth, and no one quite knows why. It was almost as if the world was being cleared of the reptiles to make way for the warm-blooded birds and mammals who were their descendants. Today, only a few orders of reptiles remain. The lizards, the snakes, the crocodiles, and the heavily armored turtles and tortoises. And this is the fossil of an Archaeopteryx, the first known bird, though he still had the teeth of a reptile. Our own age, the Cenozoic, began about 70 million years ago. And by the time this herd of primitive mammals appeared, about the middle of the Cenozoic, the birds had conquered the air, and the mammals, with their improved brains and nervous systems, their warm, even body temperatures, and their better way of bringing up their young, had become the dominant animals of the world. 